Hi, welcome to the session on environmental preparations part 1. The pleasantness of the environment impacts the well-being of the mother and the baby. Let us understand the various environmental factors and how they impact the growth of the baby. Watch till the end, make notes, participate and discuss with your partner. For the best outcome, watch the videos together and let the learnings bless you with a beautiful home to welcome the baby on board. Pregnancy is the journey of carrying the baby in the protected atmosphere of the womb. We have shared the benefits of the mother being stress-free and happy during this journey to ensure a happy and healthy baby. You would have never witnessed growth so closely as you would have seen your baby growing centimeter by centimeter, gram by gram during pregnancy scans and beyond. To ensure the swift growth and development of the baby, you need to create the right environment around you. Let us understand the various environmental factors that impact the substantial growth of the baby. 1. The physical environment, meaning the environment in your home, neighborhood, state and the country has an impact on the baby's health. 2. The social environment, meaning your relationship with others and the community has an effect on the baby's learning. 3. The emotional environment, meaning your connection with yourself and the way you conduct has an impact on the baby's well-being. 4. The economic environment, meaning your financial status and the ability to spend has an impact on the baby's future. Let us share in detail how the many facets of each factor contribute to the growing baby and your well-being. The physical environment in which the baby is going to reside will impact her growth and well-being. The geographical location, the political stability, the terrain and the weather conditions all contribute to your well-being and thus influence the baby. In this case, we will just be looking at these factors in your home environment which can be easily influenced by you like the importance of light, colors, sound and air which have an impact on the baby. Let us understand each one of them in detail. Light In the right light at the right time, everything is extraordinary. Light has the power to brighten up your day or make you dull and lazy. That is why we wake up on the sunrise and sleep after sunset. Let us first understand the impact of light on the newborn. Sunlight is the main source of vitamin D, essential for the bone strengthening of the newborn. Also, it is the best cure for jaundice often experienced by newborns. Light exposure during the day and avoidance of light exposure during the night will promote the normal awake and sleep cycle of the baby, thus ensuring sleepful nights for the new mothers too. The baby will sense the environment to understand when to sleep and when to wake up. So, it is my sincere suggestion that the infant should be exposed to natural light during the day and essentially dim or no light exposure at night. This will establish a routine for the baby to remain awake in the daytime and sleep through the night sooner. With electricity as a boon, we often try to hide the darkness with high power illumination and confuse the child. Use artificial lighting sparingly. The obvious effects of light are 1. It impacts sleeping patterns. Most of us do not sleep with the lights on. A dim light is used by a few to trace things in the darkness. 2. It coordinates the body's chemistry which not only controls the sleeping patterns but also the emotions and behavior of an individual. Most of us hide in darkness when we feel upset or angry and enlighten ourselves when we are happier. 3. It is healthy and keeps us energetic. Sunlight is the main source of vitamin D required by the body. This is how the physical factor of light impacts us. Ensuring a room with enough natural light for the baby will help the baby grow well. Light has the power to heal and give eternal warmth. Colors possess a language without words. 
According to research, 80% of the information our brain analyzes comes through our eyes, which is why we are so dependent on visual stimuli, including colors. Colors stimulate the nervous centers of sight and parts of the brain that deal with emotions. Hence, we all try to make the baby's world as colorful as possible. Answer a few questions on color. Which is your favorite color? When do you wear your favorite color? When you feel happy or when you are sad? Do you intentionally buy things with a particular color? You need to understand that colors and emotions are closely linked. While warm colors can evoke peace and harmony, bright colors may provoke naughtiness and every shade and combination has a role to play. The baby's room shall be decorated with light and pastel shades soothing the mother and the baby. Amazing fact, newborn babies cannot see. They can hardly view objects within 8 to 10 inches away from their eyesight. Babies can see only black and white patterns in the first three months because of the high contrast. Otherwise, their world is all grey until the first three months. They shall gradually develop their vision and see well by the end of 100 days of birth. Until then, we suggest you show a lot of black and white patterns to the baby to stimulate her visual pathway making her waking hours interesting. Otherwise, with almost no vision or blindness, the baby seems bored and sleeps for most of the hours. Such is the impact of colors on the growing baby. Isn't it amazing? The sound waves generate vibrations in our bodies. Soothing and melodious sounds have the power to heal, whereas chaotic sounds can create fatigue and hamper growth. We have all witnessed how newborns react to the sound and are often plugged with cotton buds to avoid unpleasant sounds. Research conveys that when babies are exposed to noise higher than 80 decibels in routine, it makes learning difficult and is harmful to the development of language. Vital statistics. The sound made by a mixer blender is more than 80 decibels and the sound on a busy street in any market are below 80 decibels. So, do not take the babies to places like theatres, pubs, musical concerts and chaotic places where there is a high sound exposure. Inadvertently, you would be harming the sensitive ears of the baby harming her hearing abilities. Amazing fact, sound is the vocabulary of nature. Exposing your baby to the natural sound of the chirping birds, waves of the ocean or passing wind can soothe her soul. Music can also be played for the baby to activate her auditory pathway. We recommend light classical music to be often played to keep the environment soothing and vibrant. A bout of fresh air has the power to uplift. We all breathe air that is freely available and we all know that the air in the atmosphere is often polluted. To keep the baby's environment pure and clean, use greens for natural air purification. This will help the baby gain enough oxygen while ensuring good health. Air pollution often causes sleepiness, fatigue and laziness in doing everyday activities. It may also cause respiratory problems and congestion of the lungs to the baby. Pneumonia is the single largest infectious cause of death in children worldwide. In the concrete jungle that we are living in, having plants and trees in the vicinity can reduce the effects of air pollution. You shall take the baby in the fresh air near the growing plants or gardens regularly. You cannot avoid the air pollution from reaching the baby, but you can ensure air purification for the baby. We have just shared a few important factors affecting the physical surroundings of the baby. As soon as the baby breathes into this world, she is exposed to multiple pollutants. Much before she develops a strong immune system, we need to create a healthy environment for her. We have enlisted some important do's and don'ts to prepare your homes well in advance to welcome the baby. Remember that the baby is your responsibility and is immobile for the initial six months. Any infection caused to the baby is purely 
due to your negligence and ignorance. Here is a checklist you got to follow to prepare your environment at home and ensure hygiene. Room care. Ensure a well-lighted room for the baby which has natural light exposure to keep the baby's room warm and pleasant. Using blinds instead of cloth curtains will ensure a dust-free environment. The baby's room shall be decorated with light and pastel shades soothing the mother and the baby. Keep the baby's room shut to avoid unnecessary harming sounds. Keep plants near the windowsill or balcony and not close to the baby. Avoid flower bouquets in the newborn's room. Avoid balloon decorations in the baby's room because they may burst and create annoying sounds. Ensure that the room is cleaned and disinfected at least twice a day. Do not use strong odor disinfectants. Do not clutter the baby's room with showpieces, soft toys, artificial flowers or unwanted things which would attract dust or create unnecessary sound and are of no use to the baby or you. Use a different set of dustbins with a lid to collect the soil nappies or diapers of the baby or any other waste to avoid mosquitoes. Use a dry sheet under the bed sheet to ensure the hygiene of the mattress since they are not washable and will often get soiled. Personal Hygiene Wash your hands often with warm water or use mild sanitizers before handling the baby. Always have lukewarm water handy to clean the baby's potty, sticky eyes or vomit with a piece of a cotton or muslin cloth. Clean your breast with a soft napkin before every feed. Visitor Hygiene let visitors use sanitizers or wash their hands before handling the baby. Let visitors see the baby from away, as the baby is too sensitive and cannot hold her neck in the initial months. In case they are handling the baby, always hand over the baby with cloths on and wrapped in her blanket so that the baby is well protected. Let the visitors coming from outside the home change their clothes before embracing the baby. For example, the father coming from the office, the maid coming from different house or your other child coming from school or anywhere. Care for baby clothes. Buy simple breathable cotton clothes for the baby which are well fitted. Let the baby wear washed, dried and ironed clothes only. Wash the baby's clothes separately with water or a mild liquid soap because neither do babies have body odor nor do their clothes get dirty. Instead, any remains of soap in the fabric may cause irritation, reddishness or rashes on the baby's sensitive skin. Dry the baby's clothes in sunlight to kill any germs and get them ironed. Store the baby's clothes separately in a closed cabinet. General instructions. Avoid using cell phones or other electronic gadgets near the baby because they emit harmful radiation. Playing soothing music is good for the baby's growth, but not playing a television or heavy sound system near her. Refrain from eating food or storing eatables in the baby's room to avoid ants. Do not use mosquito repellents because the harmful chemicals are not safe for the baby to breathe. Do not let the baby sleep on a wet surface for long. Keep checking the baby for wetness. Change the bedsheet on the baby mattress often. Never leave the baby unattended even if she's sleeping. Always make a boundary of pillows near her to avoid any mishap. We strongly recommend you sleep with a mattress on the floor until your baby grows older. Do not stuff the baby with too much clothing or cover her with blankets beyond the chest. It may suffocate the baby. Creating a pleasant environment for the baby will ensure a happy, healthy baby. With this, we come to the end of part 1 of the environmental preparations, having shared the details of creating an appropriate physical environment for the baby and the new mother. In part 2, we shall cover the details of other environmental factors as shared earlier. Stay connected for more details on environmental preparations in part 2. Goodbye.